Hello, and welcome to this on-demand session on technology infrastructure for an immersive online learning experience. My name is Gaurav Shah. I'm the Director for Academic Technologies at Bentley University. When I submitted the proposal for this presentation, this was right before COVID, and uh, I knew there was a lot that I would be sharing with our Agile Cross community. However, since then, uh, many organizations, I think most of us, have now pivoted to some form of online learning. So um, things that I share in this presentation, maybe you're already doing some of it, uh, but I hope uh, you get some more information out of this presentation. And I would love to hear from you after you've watched this on how you're doing with your online learning uh, and what's working and what's not. And I would love to exchange notes on this stuff. Let's get started. So we'll quickly talk about Bentley University and academic technologies. Then we'll talk about some online learning models that are out there. What is online learning at Bentley? Uh, why we started? What we are doing? What does our infrastructure look like, especially with technologies? And then share some student feedback that we've received uh, over the period of some time. Uh, what we've done since COVID and what's next for us and what are we looking at uh, going forward with our technologies and um, online learning. So Bentley is located right outside. Boston. Uh, we recently got rated um, as one of the best in the world by Financial Times for our master's degree in finance. Uh, we have uh, other few ranking going on for us, but more importantly, in the online learning space, we've designed and, de and delivered about 150 plus hybrid online classes on an annual basis. And we've also designed and delivered 47 blended online classes just in the last uh, three or so years. About academic technology, uh, we are a group of 15 people uh, dedicated to provide uh, leadership, strategic leadership and direction for academic technology applications, initiatives and support services across a range of teaching and learning and research technologies. We also support campus presentations and other academic technology infrastructures around the campus. We are also in charge of designing, maintaining, and, up and supporting our 70 smart classrooms, which all of them have a projector, podium computers, a control panel to control all the technologies in the classroom. We also support learning labs, uh, which helps our students to uh, get more real world uh, experience with uh, tools and provide uh, an immersive learning experience uh, in these labs. So let's dive into some online learning models. Uh, there are many definitions out there. There are many names thrown out when we talk about online learning. So there's asynchronous, synchronous, face-to-face, um, MOOCs, e-learning, and so on and so forth. In this particular presentation, I'm focusing on really three uh, models over here. So the first one is the asynchronous model, which is no face-to-face. -face. Uh, every, everything is anywhere, anytime concept. Um, so everything is delivered in an asynchronous fashion. MOOCs is a perfect example of this. And, and if you think about University of Phoenix or SNHU when they started, this is the model that they, were, they had adopted um, when they began their uh, online uh, teaching. On the synchronous level, we are talking about all remote classes. There are, these are all live classes anywhere, but at a specific time. I think most institutions are already doing this right now. Um, I know schools are doing it for, for, for many of the school districts uh, and many higher ed institutions have also started um, you know, this particular approach of doing synchronous uh, classes. At the time when you were looking at this, one of the uh, examples that came to mind uh, was the HBX, the Harvard Business School's uh, live studio. And I'll talk a little bit about you know, what this studio is. And then, of course, there's the blended model, which has gained popularity uh, over the last few years. And uh, many institutions are, have adopted some level of blended learning, blended online learning, where you know, content delivery is primarily asynchronous, but there are some face-to-face -face sessions with the faculty member, or there's more content delivered in asynchronous and also more face-to-face -face sessions. So it really depends on what, um, how much you want to do in, in what proportion. But, but it's more of a blended approach. Here at Bentley, I'll talk about two uh, models that we have. We have the Bentley hybrid model that we started in the year 2000. And uh, we started with two courses, and we're up to now 150 plus courses that we have offered in this particular format. 
We also have the Bentley online model that we just started in the years of 2018. And uh, since that, we've uh, designed and delivered about 47 courses uh, in this particular format. Let's talk a little bit about Bentley Hybrid. So we really started this to provide flexibility for our graduate part-time students to attend classes in person or remote. And we were getting these requests that you know, our professionals are working down in Boston and they are having a hard time reaching our campus uh, by the start of the class time. And was there any way we could provide some flexibility where one week they're in the classroom, but the next week, if they chose to, they could attend the class remotely. So we really wanted that flexibility for our students. So what we ended up doing was we, we asked professors to get into a classroom, put a wireless microphone, log into the podium PC, and just broadcast the class out live. But it's not just live streaming. We also wanted to make sure that there's student interactions um, going on between the faculty and the remote students in class and the remote students as well. So in the year 2000, we, we piloted this uh, Bentley hybrid approach. And um, right away, it was, a, it was an instant success. And what we ended up doing was we took 15 of our, of our smart classrooms and we converted them to hybrid classrooms. And I'll talk about what that infrastructure meant for us when we upgraded to these hybrid classrooms. Our online learning strategy at the time when we started our hybrid classrooms was to leverage Bentley's trends in teaching and state-of-the-art academic technology. And, and we really wanted to offer a high quality online experience. And we also wanted to do so in a, in a most cost-effective way possible. So our approach was to outreach to students, uh, to enable them to learn from distance. That was our number one goal. But we also wanted to maintain the same quality of education throughout, right? So uh, we've got um, consistently, we've been praised by the accreditation teams on the approach that we've taken. Uh, we've also made sure that there was engagement between our um, in-class students and online students. And what we've also done is we've leveraged our existing students and have them in this program work as a technology assistant to ensure that the faculty is not distracted and are more focused on the student learning aspect and less on the technology side of the things. So we put together a hybrid infrastructure that is a combination of technology and service and support. So in terms of technology infrastructure, we added a smart board in our classrooms that allowed for digital whiteboarding and annotations. And once the faculty write on it, this was shared uh, as a screen share uh, to our remote students. Then we added some uh, a video camera in our classrooms. More recently, we've upgraded them, uh, them as uh, tracking cameras. But you know, the camera was really the eye in the classroom for the remote students. We added microphones to the classroom, of course, for not only for the faculty voice to be heard, but also for having uh, engagement between the students in class and the remote students. And we also more recently added a TV on the back of the classroom where the faculty can view the remote students. You know, the concept of you know, out of sight, out of mind, uh, which we were seeing more and more, where if the faculty could not see the remote students, they were less likely to call on them or less likely to um, bring them into the class conversations. So having this at the back of the room really helped them you know, remind themselves that, oh, I have my remote students as well. And we also heard from our in-class students who appreciated this feature because now they could see their remote uh, colleagues and the interactions were, were at a much better level. Here's an example of what our hybrid classroom looked like. This was two years ago where we still had the uh, microphones hanging up from the ceiling. In terms of service and support, we were really providing a white glove service. And uh, to begin with, first we, as I mentioned, we had technology assistants that we hired as student employees. And in every single course section, we had a student embedded in the class. So they would sit in the classroom with the professor on the side. Uh, there would be a, a, um, an exact setup of the faculty's computer. Uh, so there would be a second computer with the students uh, logged in uh, and pretty much monitoring what the faculty was uh, doing on the, on the podium machine. And their job was to ensure the better experience for remote students. So if the remote student raised their hand, but the faculty did not notice it, then the student over here would, would raise the hand for that remote student. 
They would also uh, ensure that the quality is good in terms of audio and video. They would prepare our classroom technologies and also facilitate with other technologies uh, like Blackboard and Zoom for the faculty member. We also had senior technology assistants who would monitor three to four classes at the same time, but from a remote location on campus. So their job was to provide high level of training and experience and can also uh, train some newer uh, TAs. They would communicate with our remote students without really disturbing their class. So if they had, if the remote students had any issues and they needed some troubleshooting um, assistance, then these SPUs would reach out to them remotely. We also had dedicated FTE and a team of other professionals uh, who are experts in online learning to provide a more general sense of support for our faculty in teaching in this particular mode. So there was faculty training that we've always done for newer faculty who are adopting this new, uh, this, this can be hybrid model for us at the time. Uh, and then we provided general support for other operations. So for example, classrooms um, that were recorded every, uh, after every class, we provided support in embedding those uh, recordings in our Blackboard LMS so that they're secure only and only available in that particular course. Here's a quick uh, chart on our growth in hybrid classes. Even though we started in 2000 with two courses, we really started scaling up in 2001, starting with 18, and we're up to about 169 courses just this last fall semester. Student feedback on our Bentley hybrid. So we've been running uh, surveys for the last uh, 10 years now. So we have five surveys that we ran. Uh, every two years we ran our surveys. And what we found overall was that 88% of our online students rate their experience seven or higher. So we asked them, you know, how do you, overall, how do you like the hybrid program? On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the, the best. And uh, this is what we've received for our hybrid program in our last uh, survey in 2019. Every student taking uh, or part of these hybrid courses, 100%, everybody wants to have this hybrid option, the flexibility to attend in class versus remote whenever they choose to. 90% of all students utilize their playbacks. So every recording uh, that we recorded for the classrooms, most students went back and re-watched it for learning reinforcements, or if they missed a class, they can also go back and watch it. And 95% of all our students who were enrolled in these classes claim that this format really helped them um, to complete their degree at Bentley University. We also asked a question on, uh, would you have pursued your degree at Bentley if the hybrid option were not available? And in our last survey, 37% of those students who responded said uh, that they would not have come to Bentley if not for this Bentley hybrid option. So this was really good news for us and helped us justify our investments in this particular program. Moving on uh, to Bentley Online, which uh, again, we uh, just recently started uh, this particular online format. Uh, why did we start it? It was, uh, you know, I think many institutions were already started, already had started looking into what's going on with online learning. Um, you know, our customers are changing. They are, they want more flexibility. They want it to be convenient with anywhere, anytime, but they also want it to be engaging. Um, and, and so really our learners need a diversity of delivery modes um, for their learning. And uh, we were seeing blended learning was on the rise uh, with flexible multi-mode delivery. Uh, lifelong education uh, is gaining popularity more and more. And with other uh, programs like Tuyu, Coursera, edX, there's more and more need for some, some form of um, online learning, which is different than what we were doing with Bentley Hybrid program. We also had a graduate task force that um, at the time made some recommendations and they wanted us to explore uh, different ways to broaden our current graduate online programs. We were seeing the rise in the use of videos in the classroom, so they wanted us to take that to the next level. And they really wanted to complement our synchronous online program. So we started looking at these three models again, the asynchronous, synchronous, and the blended models. And we looked at all the different options that we can, we can think about for offering the Bentley online uh, program. We also spoke with our faculty who provided us with in, a lot of feedback on what they would like in the online learning and what are the things we should stay away from. So they really had some concerns. One with they did not want our classes to look just like another MOOC. Uh, they did not want a lot of long videos uh, to go with their course materials. 
Uh, not a lot of face-to-face -face interactions is one of the concerns that you know, we do a lot of online learning. You know, we miss out on that face-to-face um, -face interactions that we have with synchronized learning. And they thought that when we talk about online learning, the course content would be less engaging. So you know, all that feedback that we got, uh, we then started looking at what are the different options we can do to make sure that these concerns uh, don't remain concerns for our own faculty. So we looked at asynchronous options and uh, we looked at three different options. Option one, we call it level one, which would be the, the cheapest option. Um, so there would be very low production cost. The compensation to faculty would be on the minimum side and there would not be a need for any type of a studio or something. It would be a faculty member sitting in their office or their home and just recording their videos, small videos. Uh, and there would be some involvement from instruction design in terms of how to you know, package the course, how to present the materials, but it wouldn't be too much um, involvement uh, at that point. Level two would be uh, where we would record all our classes in the studio environment. There would be some video production needed as a result. Um, the compensation to faculty would be more. And we would also have to look at getting an, a mid-sized team providing support to the faculty with instructional design, video production, graphic design as well. And then we also thought about level three, which is a very high quality studio environment, a very large team of individuals with instruction designers and user interface designers, and also people designing games or simulations. Um, the, the, the involvement of faculty would be more, so the compensation would also go up. And we also thought about, could we use virtual reality uh, in these asynchronous options? And we looked at all the different pros and cons for each of these levels. And overall, we thought, looking at all the pros and cons, level two looked like something that we could definitely uh, try it out, which would alleviate some of the concerns that our faculty have with online learning. And regardless of whichever level we went with, we wanted to make sure that we were compliant with digital accessibility standards. Uh, and at the time we were looking at VTAG 2.0, of course now 2.1 is out, but at the time this is uh, what we started looking into. On the synchronous level, we looked at again three levels. Level one, we wanted to, uh, we could say faculty could teach from their office using web conferencing software, like we all are doing right now. Uh, or many of us are already doing this right now. So this would be the least uh, costly uh, program. And we would provide uh, faculty with student technology assistance if they, if they needed any help. Level two would be uh, kind of very similar to our current hybrid program where the, there would be some students in the classroom uh, or, or, or everybody would be remote, but the faculty would be teaching from a studio. Uh, there would be video production unit to help manage camera angles. And we also looked at other platforms like Second Life for having that synchronous option. And then level three was really creating something like the Harvard Business uh, Lifestyle Studio um, using virtual reality. And, or, uh, and, and as we started looking at these options, we realized that we may have to design our own web conferencing tool in that aspect. And that wasn't feasible for us, but that was another level that we started looking into. Again, we looked at all the different pros and cons, and even on this one, we wanted to make sure that we are complying with uh, digital accessibility. So then what we did is primarily with our MBA, we started with our MBA program, and we took looked at all the pros and cons of each of the levels in asynchronous, in synchronous, we looked at our strengths, and we decided to go with a flexible blender format. So we would do both synchronous and asynchronous in our Benji online format. And as a result, we designed We've designed now 28 undergraduate courses and 19 graduate courses for our Bentley online program. In terms of uh, infrastructure, we realized that we had to make some investments and upgrades in our existing infrastructure to support this new Bentley online program. Primarily with synchronous programs, we were thinking of how can we transform our hybrid classrooms into an immersive learning environment. Uh, and this is where on the right you see the Harvard Business Studio uh, is what we visited and looked at to see you know, how they were doing it. Uh, we looked at uh, uh, IE Business School in Madrid on um, how they were doing it as well. And it's beautiful, beautiful studio environment for that immersive learning experience. And so we started looking at feasibility on these two, those two setups and came up with our own setup, which was much cheaper and called this our immersive classroom. And here you can see, this is me teaching at my course, uh, where I have all my students on one screen, 
and my content, uh, this is actually a presentation from a student whose content is shown on the screen, on the second screen over here. And we, we were using Zoom to deliver these courses in this particular format. On the asynchronous side, we knew that we had to upgrade our studios for with some more modern studio technologies. And we really wanted to provide an environment for faculty to replicate something that they are familiar with, like their office space or like a classroom. So we wanted to provide the same tools uh, for them. So on the left, you see our video production studio, which we upgraded, where we now have a light board glass. We have on the, on the back side of that uh, wall, you see there's a surface studio for faculty to do annotations while they are teaching um, on, a, on a PowerPoint slideshow as well. And then there's uh, in production, you'll see um, we actually have a full time staff member or a student helping the faculty member on the production side of this uh, video recording. On the right, we also set up a, a self, uh, self uh, mini studio where faculty could just go in and use the equipment with better lighting, better microphones, better camera to record the uh, video lectures here. And then the third piece was how can we make sure that our content is engaging? So we wanted to design our course content with interactivity, scenario based learning, and knowledge checks. And so, in that case, we went with uh, Articulate um, product where we now designed interactive lessons with audio from our faculty and created you know, knowledge checks, scenario building over here um, in this, on this particular platform, which were then embedded into our LMS, which is Blackboard. Uh, we, we made sure that our the work that we had for students was balanced with video lectures, activities, synchronous sessions, readings, study time, and so on and so forth. So everything that you would find tra traditionally in our classrooms, we wanted to take those, those things and make sure that all of those were balanced in this particular format. So our infrastructure really was Blackboard for LMS. We went with CLR24 for captioning of our videos. Uh, that we've uh, posted online, uh, and it works really well with Kaltura for video hosting. We use Zoom for web conferencing, and we increased our team to provide the support for uh, all the course design work that we had um, started working on. Some feedback from our students. Our students really liked uh, this online format that we had, and it was really offered in an accelerated format, so we really liked that. Uh, but they also like the option for attending some of the cl uh, classes live uh, via Zoom. We also asked them how, on how they felt between video lessons and the interactive lessons that we created. And uh, as you see on the right, uh, both of them were, were pretty effective uh, in terms of student learning experience. So we were um, getting some validation that the interactivity and the content was really engaging and it was not just videos that they were watching. Overall, they, they mentioned that uh, the four factors that really helped them in getting a better student learning experience was uh, organization of the course, communication with faculty member, the fact that they could learn at their own pace, and finally, consistent experience across all their courses that they were receiving. So that was in all the feedback that we got from our students initially uh, when we started this, uh, these Bentley online courses. All right, and finally, let's pivot to uh, what we've been doing since COVID. So with all these infrastructures that we've had for many years now, it was uh, fairly, I wouldn't say easy, but it was fairly uh, okay for us to start thinking about, okay, what are we gonna offer for our fall 2020 classes? And our decision was that we would scale up with all our hybrid classrooms. And that meant that all our classrooms had to be outfitted with uh, hybrid technologies or technologies to provide web conferencing. So we are calling these our extended classrooms. And really why we did this is one, we wanted to offer flexibility to students to attend the class. We knew some students would not be able to attend on campus. So how could we accommodate that, that, um, that request from students to attend the class remotely? We wanted to accommodate reduced density on campus. You know, with state requirements, we weren't sure how many students would be able to come to campus or we would be able to fit on our campus. And third, which was, our, which was our another primary goal, is how can we use Zoom to deliver hybrid experience without the traditional hybrid experience that we were known for, where you know, we will not be able to give a technology assistant in every single class, and we were looking at eight, nine hundred courses for the fall. Uh, so, and we would have to reduce our white glove service again because of the scaling of the number of courses that we would have to go with this particular format. 
So here's what a classroom now looks like. And how did we do this? We converted 54 of our existing classrooms into, uh, into these extended classrooms. We upgraded uh, 15 of our hybrid classrooms. We implemented a network-based AV infrastructure, and we went from proof of concept to project completion in just three and a half months. In terms of infrastructure, we replaced our traditional monitor with a touchscreen monitor with a stylus. If you remember in our hybrid classrooms, we had a giant 85 inch smart board. Instead of going with that, we went with a touchscreen monitor on the podium. For microphones, we went with those same seating mics that we had, but in our testing, even with masks on, we found that we didn't really need the wireless mics that the faculty had on them. So we are now just using the two ceiling mics for all the interactions happening in the classroom. Uh, of course, the camera and the TV. With the cameras, we actually shifted uh, from the strategy of tracking cameras and we went back to PTZ cameras, fan tilt and zoom control cameras. Uh, we've, we've noticed some issues with tracking cameras on and off. So we, again, because we did not have a technology assistant in the classroom, we wanted to reduce that, um, the technology issues that we were getting with some of our tracking cameras. And finally, we also upgraded our backend uh, AV systems. We were an AMX school and we just upgraded to QSC technologies. And this was a control panel that we went with to control all the different technologies in our classroom, including camera presets, switching back and forth between our screens, and also lighting presets. And this is the final product of what our extended classroom looks like. So what's next for us? Uh, first, we are going to start uh, collecting feedback from our faculty and students. In fact, we've already started receiving some feedback. Here's a quote from one of our uh, faculty members uh, who said, Bentley has done an amazing job with the technology training and everything to make this hybrid room work. It has made it possible for me to give the best classes I'm personally able to give right now. We are next also going to look at how to enhance the interactions between faculty, students, content, and environment. And finally, we're going to start exploring extended reality and online learning. Really start looking at virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality, and what can we do to improve our online learning uh, delivery. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching this on-demand session. I have my contact information. Again, please reach out to me. I would love to hear from you, what you're doing with your online learning, and uh, happy to exchange notes and give you more information on how we've been doing online learning. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay healthy.